If you live in a town that's struggling with a housing crisis, that has a housing shortage, then short-term rentals, Airbnbs are probably a hot topic of discussion. I know here in Burlington, it's been a hot topic of discussion for many years. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why I don't think it's going to move the needle in many of these towns that are struggling with housing, including Burlington and really the state of Vermont in general. Now, when you first hear this argument, if you have a conversation with your, your dad or your mom or your friend, and you say, it's all these short-term rentals, these short-term rentals, they weren't here 10 years ago. Now, these short-term rentals are up all over the place and they're taking away housing from long-term residents. You know, on, on the surface, there's not much of an argument that you can have to that because it is true that these short-term rentals, many of them were are housing units that could be used for long-term rentals, whether it's a home for sale or a home for rent. But when we take a look at the numbers at most of these communities that are year-round residences, year-round communities for people, not the vacation spots, but places like Burlington, like New York City, where they have a lot of full-time residents and full-time uh, people that live there year-round, we'll see that it's not actually pushing the needle, that a ban on short-term rentals, restricting or limiting these short-term rentals is not going to move the needle in a significant way for the affordable housing uh, and for the, the residents that need it most. Um, so before we get into the stats, my name is Liam O'Reilly. I'm a realtor here in Vermont with Jerry Riley Real Estate. If you have any real estate needs, all of my contact information's in the description. And let's get right into this first article here. We're starting in the Burlington area. So this is talking about the short-term rental compliance effort underway. So Burlington banned short-term rentals in 2022. Now there's some loopholes to get around it. Uh, if you had a short-term rental in Burlington, there was ways that you could legally keep operating your Airbnb uh, under the current guidelines up through around May of 2023. And now Burlington is, an, is hiring an outside agency to start enforcing the restrictions of these short-term rentals. But when I say it's not going to move the needle, this is what I'm talking about. The data from Burlington really shows what's going on. So Burlington, smaller city, there's about 40,000 people, 45,000 people in town. Um, Look at this highlighted section, this first one here. The city's bill ward says that the number of short-term rentals remains around 270. There are well over 10,000 rental units in the city with only a couple hundred short-term rentals. We don't see the number change drastically one way or the other. So despite all these restrictions in Burlington, they haven't seen, one, they haven't seen short-term rentals drop significantly, but even if they did, we're talking about 270 short-term rentals within Burlington proper, within the city of Burlington. Now there's 10,000 rental units in Burlington. Are those 270 units going to push the needle? Is that going to drastically make things better for, for affordable housing and long-term residents? I think it's tough to make an argument that it will. We're talking about two, little over two and a half percent of the rental housing stock. Right here, this other highlighted section. So far, 25 new affordable units have been created under this policy. It's like these policies are created with great intentions where they want to help the people who need it the most. And I agree, we have a housing problem here in Burlington, but it's not really pushing the needle. Now, let's take a look at where, where these short-term rentals are across the state. So we're on the, the Vermont digger now. We see here that over uh, most of these short-term rentals are in Stowe, Killington, Ludlow, Dover, and Warren. These are big ski towns around the area, right? Vermont is a huge vacation state. And in fact, it has a ton, one of the highest states in the country with seasonal homes. There's a lot of seasonal homeowners here. So, and there's a lot of vacationers that come to Vermont. And we see that right in the second highlighted section, right at the bottom there, about 16% of Vermont homes are seasonal or vacation homes. 16% of all homes in Vermont are seasonal and only about 3.6% of Vermont's housing stock are short-term rentals, are Airbnbs. So Again, 3.6% of housing. It's a little bit more than the city of Burlington with about 2.7% of housing. Now, that I, I guess that 270 might be less than 2.7% in Burlington because that doesn't take into account the units that are for sale. But still, uh, most of it is in the short term is, is are in these vacation towns. And we can see that with Stowe here, a town of little over 5,000 people has close to 1,000 active short-term rentals. Now, when we take a look at some other cities, New York just had a large ban of short-term rentals this year in 2023. And when we take a look at the data going on in New York, we'll see that they 
short-term rentals dropped 85% between August when short-term rentals were relatively legal. Now they were still illegal, but we're not going to get too, too into that into this video uh, to when the new local law 18 went into effect. 85% of short-term rentals in New York dropped. They stopped operating. Now, who is this affecting the most, right? They're, they're, Ideas to help the middle class is to help the the lower middle class, the the lower class citizens, people who need it most with their housing. But a lot of these members, these these people who are trying to fight back against the the city's regulation of on short term rentals, they say here that a quarter of the members have an income of less than seventy five thousand dollars a year, and half of them are people of color. We're gritty New Yorkers. We're the middle class is what they're is what they're saying. And I, from my experience, I found that to be true up here as well, where the people that I am helping purchase short term rentals. I mean, you know, I, I'm a realtor, so I help all sorts of people. I help people who are upper class and some of those people are interested in short term rentals. But I also help people who are middle class, who are trying to get into real estate to try to buy an investment and a short term rental is a way for them to to start building wealth. So it's not just these these massively rich people, these massive corporations that are buying short term rentals, it's it's everyday people who are trying to live the American dream as well. Now, what effect did this have in New York City, right? 270 house, uh, short term rental units in Burlington versus uh, 10,000 rental units total in New York City. It went from 21,000 short term rental units down to 3000 in October after this ban. So, again, 21,000 total units which that's a lot. That's a lot of housing stock to be brought to to, to New York, back from short-term rentals to long-term rentals. I mean, we're talking about 18,000 units here. That's got to have a, a, a drastic effect. But when you take a look at the number of housing units in New York City, and this is just, I just Googled number of housing units in New York City, there's over 3.6 million housing units in New York City. Again, it really just comes down to are these 21,000 units or 18,000 new units that used to be short-term rentals and are now long-term rentals, is that really pushing the needle with what the city is trying to accomplish with these goals? Now, if you were to make an ar argument that some of these vacation towns like Stowe, for instance, with 1,000 short-term rentals for 5,000 residents, if there's a really big housing crisis in Stowe, which I'm sure Stowe is struggling for, for rental housing, lower-class housing as well, but it's such a vacation town that it's not this banning Airbnbs, is not this huge point of contention. But if you were to make an argument in those areas, then then you could you could see the case where you look at places like Gatlinburg and, and Pigeon Forge, more than 17,000 short-term rentals in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. And they have a population of... Gatlinburg has 36,000, Pigeon Forge has 6,000. So we're looking at, you know, round up or right around 10,000 residents between both cities. And there's 17,000 short-term rentals. You know, in those towns, short-term rentals are a huge part of their overall economy. And sure, I'm sure it's hurting their housing stock, but that's what they need to, to survive. So to summarize this all up, with all these arguments going on about regulating short-term rentals. Now, I do think we need some regulation in terms of cleanliness, in terms of health standards in short-term rentals. I'm sure there's operators that um, don't follow the same strict guidelines that hotels have, and they should. I think that would be a good thing for short-term rentals. But the idea that cities and towns are going to ban short-term rentals and that's going to fix the housing problem that they're having in their individual city, I think it's just far-fetched based on the numbers. In cities with a lot of long-term residents, there's not enough short-term rentals as a percentage of the housing stock for the most part, at least, at least where I've looked at. Now, there might be cities that I haven't looked at where this is different, but at least in New York, at least in Burlington, I don't think there's enough housing stock for a ban on short-term rentals to make a big difference and help the people that these, these city's officials are, are trying to help. I do think they have good intentions, but I don't think it's moving the needle. And if you were to restrict it in these other big vacation towns like Stowe or like Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge, then you're just, you're just killing the economy there. And so I don't think that's going to happen either. But anyway, this is a very nuanced topic. Now, Whenever somebody talks to you about short-term rentals uh, and they they say, hey, all we need to do is ban short-term rentals, that'll solve our housing problem, refer them to this video and let me know what you think. If you're one of these people that got referred to this video, leave a comment, let me know why I'm wrong. Uh, or if you think I'm right, leave a comment as well. I love hearing from you folks. I learned so much from you and uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.